Hello, hello, hello. No. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> that, let's just, yeah. Hello, hello. Hello. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's going down? You're on the recovery bus. <laughs> Why do you listen to us? Uh, all right, so check it. Um, all right, I was thinking the other day, right? I was thinking about, because I was listening to the NF song Time, right? And it's just like, I just need time. Like, uh, I'm getting somewhere. I'm going to make changes. I just need time, right? Mm -hmm. And it got me thinking, because it's a common saying, like, oh, I just need time. I just need a little bit of time to get over this. I just need a little time to heal, right? And I think when people say it, they're like, in X amount of time, I'll feel better. And then they, they think that and they believe that that's all it's going to take. But it has nothing to do with time. You know what I mean? Yes, in time, it, let's say in a year, I'll feel better. That's not just a year passing of me doing nothing that I'm just far enough away from the wound or whatever to be different. It's the effort in between. Like, it has nothing to do with time as much as it has to do with the things you do to heal, right? Yep. So I don't know. I was just thinking of that concept, and I'm like, it is fuck time. Like, time only offers you the, the opportunities to do the work, but it's not about the time. It's about the work. You know what I mean? I feel like I uh, also heard this somewhere, which was my Facebook share. <laughs> so I think that was that. <laughs> oh, you're trying to say I got it from you? Like, yeah. That is just subconsciously in my head? It might be. I don't know. No. Uh, you don't got to bust out the evidence right now. <laughs> Shit, man. Like, okay, I, I stole it. All right. No, no, I'm not saying you stole it. It's just you said that it was because of the N NF song. and. But yeah. Um Fucking hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got anything to say about it or what? No, I do. I okay. actually have a lot to say because um So yeah, there's definitely you have to put in the work. But I also found this out and I know this is like super like just breaking news to me, but like probably not you or most normal people. Okay. But I, I, no shit, did not know this. It's okay to take time for yourself to calm down. Well, yeah. I didn't know this. You didn't know that. I thought that whatever feeling that I was at in the moment, when I'm like fuming with anger or whatever, that's me right there. And I have to react on it. Mm. I don't, I'm not allowed to go and take time to calm down. It's not a thing. So, well, that's like saying, oh, whatever shitty thought pops in my head is me yep. thinking it. That's that's how I feel. That's truth, because that's to me my truth. So I'm going to let it come out of my mouth in word form and just add to this energy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I understand that thought. And yeah, it's hard to it's hard to see anything else when you're in that triggered state, because that is your reality at the moment. It's all your truths aligned, but it's not the truth. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, taking time for yourself, that is actually what how time heals. Because in those moments when a certain amount of time passes, you actually get back to your normal self in that triggered state. And I have not figured out the psychology behind that. I don't think I ever will, but, um, it's what? crazy how, what? No, go ahead, if you're finishing something. It's crazy how you can just go from, like, one state to another. Like, the more I pay attention to myself, my feelings, my triggers, the more I realize, like, in one moment I'll be, like, super... Just, just either super angry or, you know, like last night I was just so angry and I like, and, and it rolled over to the morning 
And then all of a sudden, I was okay again. And I know this is, like, common sense. I know this is, like, normal. But this is seriously breaking news for me. For somebody who has been so disconnected from myself, it's like, this is real. And it's okay for me to just take time to myself to feel okay again. I don't need to run with whatever is there. That's not who I truly am. Um, well, I know, like, for me, right... <clears throat> It's um, it's kind of going back to where I started at. Like, yes, time, right? But if I, t- if I take time and don't do anything with it, but let it pass, it doesn't really do much for me. If I get triggered, if I have an altercation, a situation, and I just walk away from it and that's it, I'm when when I'm around that person again, when I'm in that situation again, those feelings are still going to be there because no work was done. Right. So, I mean, you can't do anything without time. Like, obviously, unless you're fucking freezing time and doing all your inner work in a split second. So, I mean, time is a factor, but it's not. It's not the cure. You know what I mean? It's it's just, it's just a piece of the puzzle. The work is what's involved. So if I'm like, oh, I I need to step away for five minutes, what do I go do in those five minutes? Am I stewing even further? Am I just trying to distract myself by checking out? Am I venting to another person? You know, those are things that aren't going to fix my problem. You know what I mean? If I I leave an argument and I go just try to bypass it, go vent to someone else and re-spark these emotions then I'm I'm doing more damage. You know, I'm going to come back to the situation and nothing's going to be changed. Maybe, like, my heartbeat slowed down a little bit, but nothing got changed in me. But if I take this five minutes and I go do some deep breathing to check myself into the moment and I give thought to my reactions or maybe, like, some type of misunderstanding that was there yeah. and try to reframe what just happened... That's time, but that's a different way I'm using and spending my time, right? Like, so it's not so much the time. And I only, you know, bring it up because it's such a common saying that I think people really don't put much more thought into. You know, I know I didn't. You know, it was just like, oh, I just need, I need time, you know. Oh, I just left a a bad relationship. I'm not ready to date yet. Well, when are you going to be ready? I don't know. I just need time. Like six months. Okay, what are you doing in those six months? Right. Are you just fucking farting around? Like, are you investigating what happened in your last relationship that your parts? Are you breaking down your emotional walls? Are you doing Are you doing anything? Or are you just letting time pass? Because if that's the case, someone could be more ready in a week than you are in a year. If they're doing things during that week. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess when they say time heals all wounds, it's the work is assumed that's going to be put into it. And work does require time. So that is just automatically assumed in the equation. Yeah, just like our favorite um our favorite little uh recovery stuff where we're just like don't date in early recovery. We talked about that before. And everybody says, oh, it's a good idea to not date for one year. Oh, okay. What does an abstinence-only year look like to someone who doesn't work a program, who doesn't fucking do any type of, like, inventory, um, self-reflection, inner work, grasp new ideas and perspectives? You know, someone who just abstains. What do they look like in a year? What is someone who jumps right in, runs through the program, light bulbs off every fucking other meeting they go to? What do they look like in a month? You know what I mean? Like, so what is this one year deadline? You know, Mm -hmm. how do we tell that? Is it time? Am I just magically cured after a year to not be someone who checks out into escaping myself in someone else or I just have like I don't know anger issue anger issues under control or I just fucking know how to treat somebody like 
No, it's the work. What do you do with that year? I've met people with 10 years, 20 years of sobriety, and it's not very much quality there, you yeah. know, from my perspective. And I've met people with six months who are just like brand new people, you know. So. Yeah, it's all about quality, not quantity. Because time really doesn't matter in anything. It's just the only measurement that there is is just the quality of the inside of yourself. And doing the work. Yeah. And we're all on, like, different levels, like, all the time. And we kind of have our own time, our own work levels. And it's almost like the people that are on the same work level, quote unquote, are attracted to each other. And the people on a different work level, lower or higher, attract to each other. So your vibe attracts your tribe. I mean, that's true. So I guess you could say, like, people that are putting in the work into themselves faster, you know, on the same speed, I guess you want to say. Yeah, speed. Because, I mean, you could have, like, the low-life burnouts, whatever. They're, they're on a certain speed of their workflow or whatever. They're still at, they're, I mean, they're at a very low one. So it's going to take them a long time to hit the dark night of the soul, right? Mm-hmm. But they're still getting there. I mean, every day is another step closer to figuring out, yeah, this doesn't work for me. And then, you know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, time isn't really a measurement. It's just, just a man-made concept. It's all about just how how we figure how we figure ourselves out on the inside, what, what kind of work we put in, how we put in the work, what we do, and yeah, and there's just a lot of steps to it. I mean, there's a step of just beating your head against the wall. <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over again that just does not work for you and it's worked for you at some point. And then you you become aware of you doing that. And then you just keep noticing the pattern, observing it, observing it until you just realize, man, this just does not work for me anymore. Right. This really sucks. And then you either go up or you go down. You know, you... you you realize, man, something has to change. I either have to kill myself or I have to change it. I have to get better. And that's when you just, that's that final push to just stop. Kind of like with using. That's how people stop using. They either overdose or they realize I got to look for something else. Something has to work for me. Something else. And... Everybody has a certain amount of time, therefore a certain amount of work or inner change. I'm trying to like come up with a good word for this because it's not change and it's not time, but it's like um, just like a series of processes that go inside through inside of you because you may not think that, you know, pushing yourself to that limit is work, but it kind of is. Like working towards figuring out that this doesn't work. Kind of like, you know, with my computer stuff and troubleshooting. When, or just doing anything, you know, I, I try different things, right? And none of them work. And me seeing that they don't work, that's, that's already work. That's already, like, that's what I, I needed to see this. I needed to figure it out that it doesn't work. Because when I see it doesn't work, 
I'm like, man, this sucks. I just screwed it up. I, I suck. I can't do this. But that's that's not how it is. I I'm, I'm just I'm just one step closer to the solution. I'm I'm just negating things that don't work. I'm I'm, you know, checking them off the list until I just come to the one final one, right? Right. So that's what we do. We try different things and and all those things take us a certain amount of time. You know, for me it took 2 years or 3 years to figure out that using hard drugs doesn't work. And for some people it takes 10 years. For some people it only takes a couple of months. So Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to reel my thoughts in real quick cuz you had a long-winded sentence. And I had a couple things, a couple different topics. So I'm going to do a little bit of wiki, wiki, rewind. Um, so with the vibe and the tribe, you were saying, you know, your vibe attra- attracts your tribe. So the thing is, when we're first reawakening, right, mm-hmm. in whatever way, yes, we have a new vibe, right? Yeah. But we also have people in our life and conditionings in ourselves that attract a certain vibe, which is usually an old vibe. Well, yeah. So we, on a surface level or on a immediate level, we attract to the old vibe. And the old vibe doesn't work anymore. So in the, with the new thing, either we become discontent in the new thing, the new vibe, Right. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm losing myself already. No, I get it. What you're saying. All right. So we got a new vibe. We fuck with the old vibe. You know, we run into somebody who's got an old vibe because it's it's familiar to us. We see them. It looks mm-hmm. familiar. It's not easy, but it's it's easier. You know, it just it seems automatic, you know. Mm-hmm. And we're not we're not OK with that. Something's off. We're not vibing. Right. Now. If we commit to our new vibe and we're working a good program and we're dedicated to our new selves, we get out of that because we're like, all right, yeah, no, this clearly just isn't working, right? But the problem that can happen too is that we get sucked back into our old vibes. The old vibe, if we don't let it go and we try to cling or we try to change, you know, we're, when we're in a new vibe, we are in a, we don't have the best foundation because we had the old vibe for a long time. Mm-hmm. Shit's ingrained. It's like cemented. Familiarity. Yeah. So our new vibe is young. It's fragile. When we're fucking with an old vibe, with someone with an old vibe, their vibe is stronger because they're ingrained. They're not on a change path. They're not on a brand new road. They are they are that way so if we're trying to change them and they're not in a stage of change or they're not even they don't even have the awareness to see that there's even a difference in vibe here because maybe the disconnect we feel with our new vibe they're used to because they're in an old vibe that's used to lower vibrational you know infrequencies right so that's where we can get fucked up with early recovery stuff. Mm. You know, when, when we don't commit to the new vibe and recognize when someone doesn't have our vibe. And that's where we get sucked in and our old behaviors start coming out like crazy. All right, so that was one thing. You want to talk on that? Oh, go ahead. No, I go ahead, because no, I was going to switch it to a different topic, so the other topic you said. So go ahead. Just keep your thing in mind. Maybe write it down. Whoop. I'm going to string the balloon to my head this time (laughs) instead of letting it go. So, yeah, um, the new. So in the new vibe, when you're in the new vibe, I feel like you have to really, really want it and do whatever it takes to, to be in the new vibe. And, you know, what I. Man. It's hard to say. I don't think I'm a good example for this. Because, like, when I got out of rehab, 
I still kept getting, you know, I realized I want something different, but I kept getting, like, getting pulled towards my old life, my old friends, just everything. I wouldn't use, but, you know, and, I mean, shit, I hung out with partiers for the first three years of my recovery. So... Because I, I really did not know anything better and thank God I didn't relapse. But yeah, you are right. But, you know, it wasn't that my vibe completely changed. It wasn't until I was surrounding myself with people with my new vibe. Because when I, because when it was old vibe people, they were, they were keeping me down. It was like I was like on this like medium vibe. Mm-hmm. It was like I was trying to be up, but I kept getting pulled down. So then when I started coming around the new vibe people, I started raising up, feeling, literally feeling like my real self. So I had to really, really want it because around that moment, when I hit that dark night of the soul, that's when I stopped I cut out all old vibe old vibes even the ones that weren't even that bad you know they were like my sober friends back in the day who were like the goody two shoes but now they just drink casually you know every weekend whatever and I could see that even they don't have much going for them so I didn't even want to be around that anymore mm. so Cause I just, I I figured out what I wanted. I figured out my exact vibe. I figured out myself. I found myself. I found what I, you know, what my vibe is basically. So by finding out what my vibe is, that's how my vibe became new and solidified. Yeah. Yeah. And it has, it doesn't even have to be like, oh, these people are like, bad these people are no. on drugs these people are you know toxic like it's just we're just not on the same wavelength anymore mm-hmm. you know what i mean and that's okay like it's just if i'm trying to advance in life in myself in my spirituality in my energy and you know thank you look at you <laughs> um I have to keep surrounded with people who inspire that. That way I can inspire that. Because if I go around the old vibe people or just the different vibe people, not only do I not get inspiration and energy from them to keep growing, but they don't even appreciate the energy I give. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, what are we doing here? And that's what People get messed up when it's like, oh, I have to be around my family all the time. Oh, I have to be with these friends because I've known them since we lived on the same street in third grade. You know what I mean? Oh, I have to, like, stay with this person who I was with before I went through this change because I made a promise five years ago, eight years ago, whatever. And, like, it's like, no, because that is where we get spiritually trapped because... Our vibes aren't appreciated. They're snuffed out. You know what I mean? And that's not to say, oh, I have a new vibe tomorrow. I'm going to run off and just delete everybody here and create there. I mean, that's an extreme. But, like, we have to more often than not honor our vibes and get into, you know, the people around us that help us grow, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. but especially when we're shooting for those old familiar vibes because it just seems so familiar. Like, that is a trap, man, and it feels right. It seems like it fits, and it connects, and it feels right. But it doesn't really take that long to say, damn, this is just not working, but now we're stuck because now we're kind of attached to something familiar. Maybe even some of our old defects and our old conditionings are coming out and it's starting to feel like home to us. You know what I mean? And and it's like, now I can't let this go even though it's clearly not good for me because I'm familiarized again with this person. Maybe I'm seeing them in a, pot- in a light of potential or in a light of non-reality, you know what I mean? 
but um, I don't know. It's just we don't even see it coming sometimes, and you don't know right off the bat if someone's your vibe or not. I mean, you can kind of tell when someone is, but you don't always know when someone's not because right. we all always put on some type of uh, front, you know, in the beginning. Yeah, to be liked by everybody. Yeah. We gotta have that mask on, you know, but that shit don't stay on that long. <laughs> yeah, I'm really bad about reading those masks a lot because I just, I will fall for people straight. And like, if we vibe at all, you're my best friend. You just like, we do stuff together, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, I'm not even gonna start naming names, but, um, but I'm actually getting better about, just not getting ahead of myself and, you know, just not assuming that, like, every person I meet is, like, super amazing. Hmm. It's like, I wait until I see their defects come out and then I make my decision. Um, but then I also, it's always, like, an extreme, it's like, Oh, this person's really cool, and then they show one little thing that they do wrong, and it's like, oh my god, you you suck, I hate you, like, mm-hmm. just super judgmental. Like, I I used to be so bad about it. But the more I accept and see myself for how I am and, it, you know, accept myself, I feel exactly the same way about other people. I I can think, like, okay, it's okay for you to, like, be this way, you know? It's okay for you to have you know, flaws, just like it's okay for me to have flaws. Right. And I'm not perfect, just like nobody else is perfect. So, yeah. But familiarity and, oh, there's so many things. Yeah, I don't know, just the brain, the brain wants to jump to something it already knows, the the known, because the unknown. It's so scary. It is. That you have to turn the fear of the unknown into curiosity. Ooh. Man, there's something I read about that, and I forgot about it. That it killed the cat? No. Oh. It'll Shh. kill your demons. Oh. Curiosity kills your demons. <gasps> Episode title... <laughs> I want to make a demons are cats joke, but I don't think you'll appreciate that. No, I that. won't appreciate that. Okay. I will be very angry. So, speaking of death, <laughs> um, that kind of brings me back to my other point where you were talking about the Dark Knight of the Soul. Oh, yes. All right. So, when we first talked about Dark Knight of the Soul, I honestly didn't know what it was. Like, I, I, I kind of put two and two together as far as, like, it's something. But I was like, when you just kind of explained it. Um, so you ex- go ahead and re-explain it for the people who may not know. Okay, 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 okay. So, it's the point that your soul hits, or you, just in general, that you, you hit a rock bottom. A complete rock bottom where there's nowhere to go but, but either up or, you know, you just don't want to live anymore. So it just depends. You know, some people choose death and some people choose to awaken or to realize that there's something else that you can do differently. You just you realize that whatever however your life has been going lately, you realize that it doesn't work. It just it sucks. You're tired of feeling this way and something needs to change. So that is what majority of addicts get to a point, to to that point where they realize I need to get clean, you know. But I think there's so many levels to this dark night of soul. I feel like everybody has multiples where at each dark night of the soul, it's it's like a lighter night, you know. It's like a, the night gets... The oh my god, I can't fi- I can't explain it. Um, but the night isn't as long. Okay. 
yeah. So the first night, it's the longest. It is, like, December 21st. I think it's the longest night. That's the one where you're just like, okay, I gotta get clean, right? So you do that. But then you realize once you get clean, then you'll start living a whole different life. You realize you still got problems, right? And it, your your biggest, worst defect comes out, and it keeps happening. It keeps happening, it keeps happening, and you realize this doesn't work for me anymore. It sucks, I can't keep living like this. Like, say codependency, right? You just keep realizing that you're just super, like... You know, you, you get dumped, right, by somebody you, you thought you just loved so much, you couldn't live without them, and now it's like, boom. You are sober, and you don't have that person that you were escaping to this whole time, you just loved so much. What do you do? That's another dark night of the soul. You're just like, man, I really had this problem with just codependency, you know? So then you decide, okay, is this going to be my relapse slash death? Because, I don't know, to me, relapse is death now. Or am I going to learn how to just live without people? Without, like, codependency. So you do that. And then you got other defects that come along. And so I think step six, what it means by we were ready to let go of our defects. That's all it says. We were, right, we were ready to let go of them. Which means that that, that readiness is all that it takes. Is to, 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 to be able to let go. Because... When you're ready to let go, you realize that this doesn't work for you. You can't get away with it anymore. Mm -hmm. So you can't you you realize you can't get away with continuing to just jump from one person to another because eventually everybody's going to leave and you you are going to be the one who's left with yourself. So that was my biggest that was my second worst night of the soul like so that's when I realized, okay, I, I'm on my own. Like, so then my next one was, I think, yeah, so how to be alone. And then I, I can't remember. I think it was whatever. It doesn't matter. But there's just multiple ones. There's multiple defects, right? And there are certain defects that you will never be ready to let go of because you will continue to just jump around in survival mode just thinking it works and I think me being hard on myself I'm still not ready to let go of it because it's been working for me I've been seeing benefits of it because you know I'm addicted to the feeling of like okay I haven't I got everything done I have nothing to do like and I I've, I liked I've been liking that feeling so now I'm heading to a point where it's never going to be, I'm never going to get a feeling of, oh, I'm done. I'm never going to get that feeling, that constant chase I've been chasing. I can't get to it. So that's why I needed to take so many hard classes this semester the, that it happened that way is for that dark night of the soul to hit me. So I'm starting to realize it's not going to work for me because I'll always have something that I have to get done and I'll never get to that feeling ever. I have to accept it. So what do I do? Do I either end my life or do I do I try to work like get better? You know, and of course I want to get better. So That was a fucking long ass <laughs> intro. Damn. I'm like I, I, I was going to say something. I had a lot to say about it. <laughs> no, sorry. you're good. Um all right. So all right. So my point was going to be because the way you broke down the dark night of the soul is that you come to a point where you either change or you want to end it. Yeah. All right. So I'm taking that as the definition of dark night of the soul probably means like actually end your life. Like you just can't go on. I don't know if the dark night of the soul technically means like suicide. Yeah. Okay. So while you were kind of explaining that, I'm like, people hit these dark nights of the soul without suicide because they kill themselves their spirits mm -hmm. by checking out doing drugs um becoming completely trapped in a marriage 
watching TV all day, like their fire dies. You know what mm. I mean? So like it doesn't have to get to this. I'm going to actually physically end my life for you to be experiencing a dark night of the soul. Because I know a handful of people who are, I mean, like ball and chained trapped in a marriage. Like they are not happy, but they just stay. You know what I mean? They're not at that point where this feeling is inspiring them to get up and make a change. It's breaking them down to where they just feel like trapped and they crawl inside of a shell. Like, why bother? Same with drugs, man. People like constantly is a never ending chase to not feel because they don't like where they're at and they don't know a way out. And this is the only thing they know or it's the only option they have. So, I mean, shit, when I was using the whole time, I was killing myself. Like, not, oh, I'm doing so many drugs that I'm going to physically die. I was killing myself every day. Like, I have to kill my consciousness. I don't want to think. I don't want to feel. I don't want to know. I don't want to... My goal, I was like, I don't want to know who I am. Like... And I didn't get that high where I was just like completely gone, but I had to be so high that I was distracted in the present, but under the vibration of awareness. You know what I mean? Like I had to just be unaware, unconscious. Like that was my goal. I just want to not remember my past. I want to not worry about my future and I don't want to be bothered by anything going on ever. Like, that's a tall order. But that was me hitting that dark night of my life without the drugs. You know, I mean, I was always on a drug. but So the drugs were like the, rem- the, the remedy for me at the time. And then the true dark night of the soul where I chose to go the other way was when I got clean. Because I was like, okay, now my escape route isn't working anymore. These things in my life that I keep bypassing, that I keep escaping, that I keep killing myself over and over again because of, like, now I'm not making this choice anymore. I'm done. Like, let's get out of here. And then I've experienced others where I stayed in a relationship. I, I felt dead inside. Like, it, it was just, like, such a defeating feeling to feel like I don't know what to do. Like... I guess I'm just stuck. And it takes a lot of strength to to walk into the unknown, especially if you have things to lose or things to sacrifice to get there. And it's going to rock the boat and leave you in, like, unsure territory to be like, well, I don't know where I'm going to live or I don't know who I'm going to end up with or I don't know what I'm going to do. But this ain't it. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't the answer. And I understand why people stay in these marriages. Um, It's, you know... Oh, things are going to be different one day. Uh, I see potential. It used to be like this. He told me he was going to do that. You know what I mean? But the reality in a whole on like a ratio scale, like more often than not, is this. I just want to fucking check out, you know, and that's that's that dark night of the soul, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's the very, very first stage of it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, definitely. I I just said drugs, like, you know, just, I mean, it's anything that you just escape your, from yourself entirely. You know, for some people, it was codependency the first stage. Or it was, you know, whatever, TV addiction. Video games. Video games. Phones. I'm on my phone all day. Work. Work. Ooh, yeah, that was a, that was a big one for me. Because my first thing was, okay, so first it was drugs, then it was work, then it was relationships. Yeah, so I had three dark nights. And then my fourth one was, yeah, well, not relationships, but just being alone without the presence of, like, a, a, like anybody. Mm-hmm. Like, just people, friends, you know, whether it was friends or whoever. Right. Oh, yeah, I that remember that me. when I met you. You were like, I can't be alone. I'm always with someone at all times. Yeah, like uh, when COVID hit and I could not be in lecture or I couldn't be, you know, just mm-hmm. fucking off in the lab with all my homies and, 
you know, didn't have my roommate. It was my par- it was my mom and my stepdad who somehow their presence like was just that made me feel worse. Like it wasn't that you know, it was like people around me. Right. So it was weird, but yeah, so that that was when I picked up at Cartole because I well picked it, him up back again, um, yeah. Cause I just I realized this isn't gonna work. I can't, you know. Just that whole semester, I was surviving. Basically, I was having such a great life. You know, I thought I had it all together. You know, I got all morning class, all night work, meeting. You know, people there, and then I just passed the fuck out. You know, mm-hmm. just surviving and and this entire time of school it was like you know i i can get things done i got you know i get that feeling of oh i got it done i have some time but now i had this semester i needed it to have that i had a dark night of the soul this semester too i think it was like a month ago or so where it was just like dude you're you're not gonna catch a break you're mm-hmm. just gonna have to accept this how your life's gonna be this is how life is supposed to be for most people, you know? So, yeah. I feel like the first step is realizing that it it is a dark night of the soul or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. It is a point of choice. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, yeah. I, a lot of these people, they're just going through the motions whether they're burying their head in the sand or they're just paralyzed, feeling absolutely powerless, or they're caught up in non-reality where, oh, well, he, he keeps telling me he's going to change. You know, she, she swore she wasn't going to do it again. She's telling me this, but doing that, gaslighting, all these shits that people do, you know what I mean? Whether unaware or manipulating, you know. I think most people are unconscious. Like, I, I don't not not I don't think most people are unconscious, but I think most people that behave like this are doing it more on an unconscious level than an intentional manipulative level. Like that's I I, I know there's oh, people yeah. out there oh, yeah. who are just fucking rotten, but like I think for the most part it's it's a deep unconsciousness in them that they do these things because of their own ego, because of their own defenses, because of their own denial. But the first thing, if, if you're the one experiencing this and you're bypassing or you're like snuffing your light, is to realize that this is what's happening, you know, and that you do have a choice. Now, that choice is not going to be easy. It's not going to be like, hey, here's this really bad spot you're in or here's this easy ride to a nicer place. Like, no, it's but you're already in a bad spot. So, like, you got to get to the point where, yes, the unknown is scary, but it it can't be worse. You know what I mean? Or it could at least possibly be better. You know what I mean? And. And it's like a better now, not a better maybe, not a better hypothetically, not a better alternate universe, because that's what we do when we stay in the situation that puts us in the dark night. We think, well, maybe it'll get better here, but it's not. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's not like, oh, I had a bad day, I had a bad month, I had a funky vibe because we had one bad argument. Like, no, don't run off from that, you know, if that's not what you feel like you need to do. But, like, if you're just... <laughs> You banged your head against the wall more than a few times. Shit is proving to go one way more than another. You're not cool with it, and you're actually getting to the point where you want to, like, not feel, not be because of it. That's a sign, man. Your spirit is talking to you. Like, dude, like, why do you, where do you think discontentment comes from? Like, it comes from knowing that we are not being treated right. It comes from not being fulfilled and happy. Like, you know, if you're able to harness yourself and realize not every day is going to be jumping for joy. Not every situation is going to be butterflies and fireworks. You know what I mean? If you can, like, get past all these extreme thinkings and get to a realistic stance and, and, and you're feeling discontent with, you know, mistreatment or just 
too low vibrational vibe or just the off vibes, do something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't really know what more I can say than that. No, that was a lot. I don't really know what else I have. Um, just besides being afraid of stepping out of the comfort zone. Just wanting to stick to what you know has worked before. And just doing what you've always done. And, you know, it's scary. It's scary to do something different. It's scary to... You know, it's like, yeah, maybe you do know you have a choice. Well, you, pro you probably don't know that you have a choice until you realize that, okay, this isn't working, so there's got to be something else. So then that's when you realize there's a choice. But you, you know, you're going to continue to do the same things over and over again while you know you can get away with it. And, you know people have different levels of thinking of getting away with something or having a tolerance of getting away with it, you know? Because um, some people's tolerance is, like, way down. I mean, they'll, they'll stay with somebody who's just beating the shit out of them. And, yeah, maybe that, is, that does come from self-esteem. So, thinking what you deserve, and some people just unfortunately have really, really low self-esteem that they they will think, even if they know that, man, this sucks, but it's like, well, if I, if I really deserve this, then it, it works. I mean, mm -hmm. I deserve this, so it works. I get away with it because this is just how it's meant to be for me. Right. So, me being so incredibly hard on myself is just like, sucks, but it's like, it works. <laughs> this is meant to be. I meant, I deserve to be, to be so abusive to myself. That voice inside my head being abusive to me, like, I deserve it, you know? But just saying that out loud made me realize it and... Yeah, and like feel better. the whole tolerance thing, like when we, it's like our tolerance works backwards once we start to awaken, like, you know, we, we're using our tolerance for drugs builds, our tolerance for life builds, our tolerance for bullshit builds and all that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then when we get clean, you know, we start to kind of awaken to these behaviors and, you know, maybe develop a couple standards and boundaries in our lives, you know, our tolerance starts to fade. Like, when I first get out of that life, maybe I deal with a toxic relationship. And maybe it doesn't really affect me that as hard because I'm already used to feeling affected. <laughs> I'm used to feeling anger. I'm used to freaking fighting and arguing. I'm used to, like, taking days off, not talking to you in the same house. And I'm used to the tension. I'm used to the drama. Yeah. I'm used to all the toxicity. Like, it's like a drug, you know, but... Once I start changing my ways, up in my vibe, surrounding myself with some new vibe tribe, you know what I mean? Like, now, I don't have a tolerance for this shit. Like, I don't like arguing. I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to sit here and yeah. have pissing matches and ego dick swings against you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, it doesn't feel good. And I have no tolerance for it. Like, you know, I mean, I can handle some shit if it goes down. But, like, I also know that there's there's another way and I don't have to put up with it. So, you know, especially, like, relationship. Like, I'm not about toxicity. You, like, want to flip out on me and call me names and get all petty and, you know, toxic with me. Like, I, I don't even get involved anymore. It doesn't even suck me in like it used to. You know what I mean? I'm just like, whew. You know, I... I I get to a point now where I'm glad for the change. Like, I'm not just walking into the unknown all the time, like, you know, freely, like, whatever. But, like, at the same time, like, when something's not working, I have no problem going to the unknown because the unknown looks good to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like I want to, to know because I, I see hope in it now. Before it was scary. It was, 
you know, unsure. There was a lot of insecurity there. There was a lot of uncertainty and all that. And I, I think I just said that twice. But, like, um, now it seems promising. It seems hopeful because I know that I could walk into the unknown with those standards, not just desperately seeking my fulfillment immediately, not just, like, walking out and being like, well, I'm going to break up in this toxic relationship, but... I need to have another one right away. Like, nah, like I, I'm good with me. I'm, I'm down for this journey. I just took a nice little like dollar of experience, as my boy says, with me from this. By setting a boundary, I got a little more self-worth. By walking away, I got a little more self-worth because I'm like, all right, man, like this is good. This is what you need to do. It sucks, but you know, the, the suck feeling sucks, but then the empowering feeling feels good. So it's like, how are you looking at this? You know, and, and how are you basing it? Is my basis, I just want to be with someone, so a placeholder will do, even if they're toxic? Nah. Like, what about me? What about how I'm choosing to navigate and the changes I see in myself? That's a good feeling too. You know what I mean? And that gives me my fulfillment today. So... Word. I'm done. How long was that? Hmm, 51 minutes.